Hello, my darling true crime angels. My name is Trisha Griffith. I am the manager of websleuths.com, websleuths.com, the best true crime discussion forum in the universe. Um, I've uh, been involved with it for over, actually, we're coming upon our 20 year anniversary and uh, we should do something fun for that. But anyway, this is an arm, if you will, of websleuths.com. And tonight we're going to talk about um, Metal and Soto and the press conference that wasn't. Uh, we also have an update on S Sebastian Rogers' stepfather, Chris Proudfoot. But first, I want to talk to you about uh, a very disturbing case of a young lady who went for a walk. She just went for a walk in San Antonio, and she was found murdered. So I'm going to show you her beautiful picture here. It, these things just make me, honest to God, they make me just want to stay in bed. Okay. And we have the, uh, I'll put the discussion link as well in Caitlin Hernandez's case that we have going on Web Sleuths. Let me put that in chat and I'll put it in the description. Okay. We have a, a very lively and interesting discussion ongoing on web sleuths. But uh, this is San Antonio teenager Caitlin Hernandez. And uh, we will change the thumbnail. We spelled the name wrong. When I say we, I mean me. And uh, I've tried to blame it on Insightful One, but I can't. So it was my fault. It was spelled wrong. I am sorry. And she will, ch she will change it soon. Anyway, Caitlin Hernandez. This happened in San Antonio. And I'm going to read from my San Antonio. This is a, a very interesting timeline here. Family members of 17-year-old Caitlin Elizabeth Hernandez seek answers and justice after she was found dead in a ditch on the city's northeast side on Tuesday, March 12th. Officials said Hernandez went for a walk with a neighbor but didn't return. Police found her naked and dead in a ditch nearby. The San Antonio Police Department responded to a call regarding a missing teen just before midnight on Tuesday. Family members told police Hernandez was last seen with a man from her neighborhood. The family said the teen went for a walk with him and didn't return. Police said the man returned to the neighborhood but did not answer the family's questions on the teen's whereabouts. Hernandez's family called the authorities and went looking for her. A man walking over the bridge on Del Oak saw Hernandez's phone in a ditch when it lit up. Police responded and located Hernandez's jacket and body. The uh, Bexar County Medical Examiner's Office said Hernandez's cause of death was determined as strangulation. Officials also said she suffered blunt force trauma, head trauma. The neighbor who walked with Hernandez has not been identified. Police said they have questioned and interviewed the neighbor, but it's unclear whether he will face charges. San Antonio Police Department also released a photo of another person of interest on Wednesday. The person has been cooperating with detectives, according to the police department, but it's unclear if the person of interest will face charges. So I'm, I'm kind of confused. Are there two people here, the neighbor and a person of interest, or are they one in the same? They, they don't make that clear. There's been no arrest made. Since uh, uh, Monday, two from what I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, you go. From what I've been reading, it's two different people. There was a man, he was seen on convenience store camera, and uh -huh. then there was the neighbor. Yeah. Okay, so they have identified and interviewed both of them, but no arrests have been made. There is a reward Correct. of up to $5,000 for information that leads to an arrest. This is according to Crime Stoppers. Now, tips must be submitted directly to the Crime Stoppers for eligibility. I'll put this link in or this number in chat right now, and um, I'll put it in the description as well. But I look at that wonderful young lady. My God, my, I mean, really, this is, it's just like in, in a neighborhood, just in a neighborhood. Oh, Bayer, not Bear. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Flying bear. It is bear. It's pronounced bear, but spelled Baxter. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. 
why didn't I realize that? <laughs> Something has an X in it, it's silent, and you pronounce it bear instead of Baxter. Uh, God, just let me go to sleep and stay in bed, please, please, please. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, so anyway, I mean, again, this is so upsetting. This is, um, hang on, guys, just one second. Okay. Uh, I, th this is so upsetting. I mean, this wonderful woman had her whole life ahead of her, decides to go to a walk, go with a walk on a walk with a neighbor. And this happens. It's just so wrong. Uh, I'm sure the police will make a, uh, an arrest soon and we'll just keep an eye on this. But again, uh, if you have any information, I put the crime stoppers phone number in there. I'll put it in the description, and I've also put the link to the Web Sleuth discussion. We would love you to come on and join us. To join, all you need is an email account, basically, okay? So, and thank you, Bug. I actually finally broke down and bought a new pair of slip-on shoes, and I had them hidden because somebody likes to chew on them. I won't mention any names, except for Othram, Tex, Bug Nugget the first, and he just found one and brought it. Thank you, honey. Thank you. I'm so glad you found it. Don't you dare chew on it. Yeah, you can sniff it. It's brand new. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I just, uh, I feel like every night that we come on here and we tell you about these cases, it's imperative that you you realize the monsters are out there. I, I have a feeling one of the people that will be arrested will either be a, the neighbor or the person of interest, probably the person of interest. And again, I would love to know his background. There must have been signs that this monster lived inside of him. We need to open our eyes to those around us. I feel like it's so sad that I have to tell people that if you want to go for a walk, don't trust anybody, you know, don't walk with anybody. If someone asks you to come over to their car, they need help. Don't do it. You know, keep your cell phone with you. Call 911. And that's so sad. That's so sad. When I was 10 years old, I'd go for walks after dinner by myself all the time. I remember walking around my grade school and a guy joining me like a, I thought he was old then. He was probably 40 and telling me all about the, um, the, farms that they used to have out there. And he would walk with me. He probably walked with me five or 10 times. Never a problem. You know, nowadays, oh my God, if a stranger walked up to a young girl walking and started talking to her, whoa, but understandably so, understandably so. So everybody, please be careful out there. Okay. And our hearts go out to Caitlin's family. I, I can't imagine the living hell that they're going through. So anyway, we will uh, keep you updated on that. So let's see. From Reason. No. H have you heard from Reason no. Insightful? No. Yeah. I that, you know what? Few so I got to put that up there. Yeah. A lot of times uh, people in chat will be here forever and then they'll take a break and they'll come back it, it happens so i hope to hear from reason hope she comes back soon i'm assuming it's a she i don't know so anyway okay uh chloe if if you're available if you can pop on yeah she and, just and messaged later, and said she was just waiting waiting oh, for yeah. to mention it yeah <laughs> yeah if she could pop on that'd be great and uh real quickly we'll go into Madeline Soto here in a little bit, but it was the press conference that wasn't. Uh, there was one little interesting bit of nugget of information that we'll talk about later, but I, I don't know why they held this press conference today. Everybody was excited. Is is uh, Stefan, the boyfriend, going to finally be charged with her murder? Is 
her mother going to be charged in some way? We were waiting like, oh, this is it. There's nothing. But we'll talk about that little nugget of information. So anyway. Oh, OK. Here's the police can't win for losing. I know. I, I feel bad. I do. I don't say anything. People would like, they're not telling us anything. They're not updating us. So I right. thought it was really nice of them to come on. Even though there's nothing new, they still let us know there was nothing new. You know? Well, yeah, but I, I feel like they could have released a statement. There's nothing new. We'd, we'll hold a press conference when there's something new. You know, but you're right. They can't. Everyone's going to uh, complain and moan. And, and I will, too, because I'm an old bat and I want to complain and moan. I've earned <laughs> that right. By God. I've earned it. Everybody, I want you to uh, welcome back Chloe. She is a licensed PI who works on cases, gives up her own time to work on cases and volunteer. And uh, hi, Chloe. How are you doing tonight? Hey, guys. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, you've been really going into a deep dive into Sebastian Rogers' case, uh, yeah. in particular, his latest situation with his mother and his stepfather. Now, they gave an interview uh, last night, and it was with, hang on here, uh, Smiley Stories World, and she's had them on before. Uh, I'm going to play about five minutes of this interview. And uh, then we're going to come back and talk about it because we have some interesting information that's brand new uh, that we have received from court documents. So here we go. Let me share this. And I, I just want to say real quickly, uh, Sebastian Rogers went missing. He vanished. I mean, vanished without his shoes. The latest information is they do have some video of what looks like two flashlights the night that Sebastian went missing. Was it Sebastian? We don't know. But he left without his shoes. To me, that sounds like he was running for his life. Why would you leave without your shoes? But anyway, Sebastian's mom and stepfather have been talking a lot to people. And Sebastian's stepfather last night, I'm not going to play it again, but last night on this interview, he admitted that he hit Sebastian with a belt. And he sounded delighted with himself. And that caused a phone call to CPS because Sebastian told his teacher. And I'm paraphrasing here, but in this interview, Chris Proudfoot says that basically that the CPS worker, when she came to the door and heard the story, apologized to him and they laughed and, you know, I'm so sorry. And then Sebastian got in trouble because supposedly Sebastian lied. That's the exact uh, word he used. But he doesn't deny hitting Sebastian with a belt. But it was only once, you know. I, guys, I can't go there tonight because last night I was so upset. Literally, my blood pressure, I couldn't even get it down. It's like I almost stroked out. So uh, that's that's who we're dealing with here. And normally, I would never, ever bring up information about, um, you know, a missing person's uh, parents, a, a missing minor's parents. But he's putting it out there all over the place. Okay? It's not me. This is him putting it out there. And I'm just going to reveal what we have found out. But I want to play about five minutes of this interview. And they're talking about, he's answering a question about where he works and, and driving and such. And just a little update. Uh, what they have said was that on Sunday night, Sebastian's mother and his stepfather were on the phone for a couple of hours because he was about three hours away at his work. And Sebastian's mom said the last time she saw him was Sunday night when he went into his room and Monday morning she went to go get him and he was gone. So here is uh, Chris Proudfoot and his mother, oh God, Katie. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm getting so confused with all of these names. Is Katie her name? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, his mother's you. name is Katie. Thank you, Chloe. I just want to remember that. Okay. So this is Katie and Chris Proudfoot on Smiley Stories World, and it's, we'll play about five minutes. Here we go. 
asking me that or is one of your your no i just I, i'm asking you that i just wonder okay. like if you I, I was just wondering like if you like are you um in fact let me just i'll turn my chat off for just a minute so i don't get pre no 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 don't no no don't turn your chat off leave it okay. on it's fine okay no, i mean I'm that way you can get all these questions coming in because like i said i told you i gave you my word i come on your show i would okay. answer questions people ask the questions but keep in mind like i told y'all from the very beginning i'm brash i'm direct but i'm respectful and i ask for the same and everybody else yeah and i, I told them while well, go no, just please be respectful because i wasn't expecting this like please be respectful y'all because so, so one one thing right now i'm gonna tell you right now really irks me with some of these folks that want to follow these youtube and i'm i'm very honest about this Somebody says, I won't talk to men. I, not I that I don't that want to talk. Right. And it's that. not that I don't want to talk to men. I have talked to more law enforcement men agencies in the past 24 days than I've probably ever talked to in my entire life. Same thing goes for women. So, no, I don't have a problem talking to a man or talking to a woman. I appreciate everybody's assumptions or concerns, innuendos, whatever they want to be. But at the same time, I vet who I talk to. I'm not just going to open up and talk to anybody. Um, and I will put this out there. JLR, everybody wants me to talk to this guy. Explain to me, Smiley, you will probably have a better understanding of this. Explain to me why I should talk to JLR. Um, I just really wish you would because he does, because he does go out everywhere and he he wants the truth i mean and he may not get the truth out of you but i have seen him literally go in places deep like scary places and like really just try to get the truth and try to like follow people that's just taking him in the woods or whatever show him places whatever that he didn't know from adam he goes from one place to another he may be on a plane to mexico next time he might be in california whatever and you know i mean he's grown a lot i just think a lot of people don't give him a chance that's just my honest opinion right. said, do you know why people don't want to give this man a chance well go ahead and tell me i mean i want your opinion so i'm going to tell you my personal opinion okay Okay, this is my my personal opinion. This is nobody else's, not my wife's, not anybody else's. My personal opinion. Okay. So I did my I did my due diligence and I read up on Jonathan Lee Rich, mm -hmm. Rich is. Excuse me. I I read up on him. Not necessarily the best character in the world. When you start reading and the first thing comes up, uh, everything that you can find on this individual now. I don't know him, Adam from Eve. I really don't. He don't know me, Adam from Eve. But when he opens his mouth and goes out there and starts spreading lies, and yes, lies, because unless you got hardcore evidence that I'm an abusive husband, abusive father, I've got a, a restraining order against me, unless you got proof, don't open your mouth because it's real simple. I don't have any of that. Good luck finding it. I've never lied to y'all. I've been open and honest. People don't like my answers. So people want to come back with their own assumptions. And I'm so, so sorry that I can't open up and give you every little piece of evidence and every little detail that we know. I am terribly sorry. It sucks because when it does and it can't come out, my only question to everybody else is, when are you going to start issuing public apologies? That's that's not to you. That is to everybody that wants to come out and badmouth people that don't understand and don't have a clue what's going on. Okay, as you can see, he's worried about uh, people apologizing to him. Uh, I would not care less. I would be worried about Sebastian. Uh, Chloe, I'd like to know your your thoughts on this before we get into what we have, what you have discovered. Well, it's exactly that. I mean, starting the interview out the gate, not bringing up Sebastian being missing, not bringing up anything about Sebastian, bringing up 
JLR and the accusations that are are coming towards Chris and Chris's reputation and um, possible restraining orders. I mean, it's just like the focus is absolutely shifted and, and it's just the Chris show. I just feel like it's constantly the Chris show whenever this man speaks and he speaks a lot. He does. He does. Now, uh, in this, then this is the reason why I wanted to play this. Um, in this one part, he says he doesn't have a restraining order against him. He's not a bad father. He's, you know, not an abusive father. I, I tend to disagree uh, because he used a belt on Sebastian. He admitted it in this interview. But you also have uh, some court documents that, that you got, Chloe. And um, it's about, uh, and tell us about the emergency hearing today concerning uh, Chris and his other daughter. Well, it's it seems there was an emergency court hearing today between Chris and his ex-wife um, at 11 a.m. for temporary emergency custody. Um and I believe sources close to the family say that was granted in, in the mom's favor. So, uh, again, we Some know have there alleged was... that involves a restraining order, but I, I haven't been able to source that. Right, right. Now, again, just so we want to be clear, there was an emergency meeting or hearing today about the temporary custody for the minor child. And this this court case has been going on for five years between Chris and his uh, ex, former wife. Actually, longer than that, 2017. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yeah, longer than that. I know, what is time? <laughs> my math, it sucks, as you can tell. But, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> okay, so he, oh, according to sources close to the family, this temporary custody of minor child was granted. And again, according to sources close to the family, that involved a restraining order. Now, we don't have that information yet. We're just going by your sources. And uh, yeah, it says that the restraining order was extended. Um, I don't have the documents in my possession, okay. but that's what the source says. Okay. So uh, again, normally I wouldn't bring any of this up. Okay. Because you've got a family here with a missing 15 year old and the police have never said that they're suspect. Police haven't said anything like that. But when you have this man going on and practically bragging that he hit his stepson with a belt, you know what? That's where I draw the line. And I'm like, really? Okay. We're going to look into this. And, and, uh, Chloe, you are an amazing human being. I mean, one thing I know about you is you are so careful uh, about sourcing things and getting documents. And, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that this information is incorrect, but if it is, we will certainly correct it. But it's not wrong because there's we have documents showing that there was an emergency hearing for temporary custody of a minor child. And uh, that absolutely. And I, I have no reason to doubt uh, your sources at all. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No, I mean, I, I feel that the, the sources are good as well. Um, and you know, he, he did say in an interview, I can't remember which one they've, they've talked so much, yeah. um, that, you know, that this had caused a riff in his current court case in New Mexico. So he mentioned that a couple of days ago. Um, so he, I think he said he was hoping he would sort it out or something like that. But um, so, I mean, I feel like it's probably true and it, it is really interesting that it was filed. Um, I mean, a couple, let me, I'll have to pull it back up, but it was like a couple of days after Sebastian went missing. Went missing. Right. It's like, uh oh, he's got somebody missing, a minor child missing in his household. I'm going to take care of our child. That's kind of what it sounded like to me. Right. That, that the mom was doing. I want to read what Marjorie Moore says. Reminds me of Letitia Stout's weird interview where when she said she was looking forward to everyone apologizing to her when Gannon came home. It does sound a lot like that, doesn't it? 
you know, he's talking about apologies and um, right. people are going to apologize. Yeah. And they'll be, you know, and he's telling the truth and on and on and on. Now, well, and to make it abundantly clear, um, because I, I think sometimes the stepdad might confuse people, uh, the TBI and it, no law enforcement has said that anyone is cleared. Right. Point blank right. period. They haven't said the word vetted. They haven't said the word foul play. They have said that they are shifting the investigation away from ground searches more into a, an investigatory like stage and that the, the family has been cooperative. That is all they've said. Mm -hmm. No one is going to be cleared until they find Sebastian. Right. No one. So, it, I mean, and he said he's been cleared and vetted and cleared and he, it's not, no one has said that besides Chris Proudfoot. Exactly. And, if that were really the case, the cops would come out and say, hey, everybody, stop it. We've cleared them. There's no way. Move on. You know, they would they would squash this. They would. But rarely do you ever hear of law enforcement coming out and say, we've cleared the family or we've cleared whoever was the last to see the person that went missing. We've cleared them. Rarely do they do that. Now, you have to wonder, did law enforcement tell? Chris Proudfoot that. What what do you think, Chloe? I, I do not think they told Chris Proudfoot that. They, they I, I yeah. my personal opinion, I, I don't think so. And they have been extremely quiet. Mm -hmm. They were constantly doing interviews um, and press releases the first maybe five days, six days. Mm -hmm. And then it's just been Besides that TBI released, I think it was uh, over a week ago at this point. Um, it's just been crickets. Yeah, and I think it's been crickets because they don't need to do anything. You know, they're just yep. blabbing <laughs> away. And again, normally I wouldn't go into somebody's background like this because we all have a past, you know. But again, uh, Katie and Chris have been talking a lot. And I want to bring it around again where Chris, yes, I hit him with a belt. Yes, I hit him with a belt. Just once, hit him with a belt. Chloe, you found something interesting in some older court documents about um, Katie. And this was uh, with Sebastian's father going through their divorce about a letter she wrote to the judge concerning moving. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, Katie was, was in the Navy uh, for a very long time and she was, I guess, supposed to be stationed in New Jersey at the time they were living in San Diego. And so she was petitioning the court to allow her to move with Sebastian um, and, this petition is several pages long and she gives several different reasons and explanations about how she'll handle his education and medical care. And then there's a section about discipline and she says that she will not discipline Sebastian corporally. So she puts in writing to the judge trying to convince the judge to let her take Sebastian and move to another state, which was denied. Um, it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, these documents, as you know, came to my mailbox today. Um, yeah. I think it was denied. There's a, a lapse in time in some of these documents where it's just like they stop and then pick up again. So mm -hmm. I, I would have to verify that again. But she does say that she, that is not a form of discipline that she was going to. Right. Policy. So she she states in writing, I will not punish him corporally. And that means you won't hit him. Yet, she's sitting there on this interview while Chris Proudfoot says, I hit him with a belt. And, you know, earlier, we run a strict household. I have a strict household. Me, me, me. My strict household. Me, me, me. You know. And she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. And I bet she didn't, she didn't say, anything. say anything. But, oh, he didn't beat him with a belt. Yeah. No. He hit him once. 
that's beating with a belt. Sorry. And I am grateful that Sebastian told his teacher about it. Now, because we can't, we, and we won't have access to the report because it's Child Protective Services, but Chris's story is the uh, Child Protect Protective Agent came to the door and he, he knew her because there'd been another time, I guess, somehow that she had been called. She, he knew her. Oh, hi, it's you. And I'm paraphrasing here, everybody. Oh, and yeah, he acts like they were very chummy, like old friends almost. Right. And all of this is in the interview. I put the link in chat and I'll put it in the description. And Chloe, please step in if I'm misrepresenting something, okay? Uh, but, and he says that later, after she talked to Sebastian, that she apologized to him. I'm sorry. You know, basically, uh, Sebastian lied and made it a lot worse than it was. And the CPS worker apologized to Chris. Uh, Chloe, what, what do you think of that? I, when I listened to that last night, I felt like it was a lie, honestly. I mean, I know that CPS is stretched very tight and they do try to focus on the more extreme cases. Um, so if they went to Sebastian's house and saw a clean house and a full fridge and no signs of abuse on his body, which the way Chris explains it, the it's almost like the woman didn't even come in. Right. Um, but th that kind of conversation, even if at first glance everything was fine and she thought case closed, I don't think that type of conversation occurred. It just, it doesn't seem professional, first of all. Um, pulling a child aside, telling them they lied. Like, I, I just, I don't see it happening, honestly. I, I don't either. And everybody in chat is is agreeing with you. Insightful One, do you want to jump in? I would just like to hear your opinion as well. I'm having a frog issue. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. We love your no, frog. Agree. Let, him, let him sing. And, <laughs> and I, somebody's comment. Um, they said if he's admitting to hitting him with the belt, what else has he done? Mm hmm. Exactly. A lot of people wouldn't even admit to it, no. first of all. No. And secondly, like they said, that was a good point they made, I think. Yeah. And that's Moonlight View. The belt is the last measure, just about. What other measures of discipline did he employ? And again, here's the weird thing, though, right. you guys. He didn't need to say a word because this was Child Protective Services. There wasn't going to be a, a report public about this. Nobody would have known, you know, unless the teacher came forward. But it was almost like he was proud of it. I, I don't. I, I'm just. I'm and doesn't absolutely. doesn't see anything wrong with it, obviously. Yeah. He's nothing wrong I mean, with it. And that's what I've noticed about. Anytime he speaks about Sebastian, it's even if he's talking about his dancing, like, oh, yeah, he likes to dance, but it's not like normal dancing or it's not like any dancing you've seen before, like, you know, kind of making fun of him or, oh, he thinks he has friends, but we all know they're not really his friends. They're just kids he talks to at school. And he just, it, it's like he's constantly trying to, speak down about Sebastian or make him more remedial than he is. And I mean, it's just constant. Um, and, and in this case, it was like, yeah, I won that one too. You know, silly mm -hmm. Sebastian. Good point. He's always putting Sebastian down. You know, where's the terror? Where's the, oh my God, where is he? I can't sleep. I can't eat. Everybody, please. No, it's like, well, okay, what are you going to do? You know, when this one is proven not to be true. Well, again, I want to point out uh, that the police have not even suggested that they had anything to do with Sebastian's disappearance. However, he did leave the house in the middle of the night, according to them, if that story is true. Sebastian left the house in the middle of the night without his shoes. And as Beth B and others have said, he, I believe he was running for his life. That would, why else would he run away? Why else? Anybody, uh, uh, anybody. 
I mean, uh, Chloe, uh, do you think I'm out uh, up in the night here? Or? I mean, yeah, it, if he ran away, which in my right. gut, I don't, I don't feel like is what occurred. Mm -hmm. Um, but if he did, yes, I, I believe, you know, as an autistic child, that was very routine. Um, he would not have left barefoot unless it was an escalated situation where he felt like he had to run for safety. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. My, yeah. My five-year-old granddaughter, um, she will not go out the door without shoes on her own because she's allowed to go out back whenever she wants. And mm -hmm. she, you know, she's going out back because she puts her shoes on. You see her putting them on. She will not go out there without her shoes on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, guys, I have to interrupt. I've just received this message and I'm about, I'm over the moon. Uh, Mike King from Profiling Evil is in Dallas. Yay. Says, can't come to Dallas without saying hello to my friend at Web Sleuth. Just spent the last three hours with a bunch of NFL players at Crave Cookies in Prosper, Texas. Son's new store. Stop in Saturday and meet them. Will you be there Saturday? I will stop in. Oh my gosh, Mike King. Hello. You're in Dallas. I felt it. I felt the goodness <laughs> and the love. I did. I felt it just coming upon me. You know, Mike, it's funny he mentions the cookie store because they're opening a Crave Cookies here. And oh. I was wondering if that was one of his sons because they had, he had mentioned it before on the show. I have got to go. If he's going to be there Saturday, well, even if he's not, I got to go to Crave Cookies because I got to eat cookies. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's part of life, people. But uh, Mike King, I love you. Thank you so much. Yes, I will be in touch. And we've got to just say hello. And I, I will go to your son's store. I can't wait. Everybody's saying, hi, Mike, because they love you. You're feeling the love, Mike. You're feeling the love, I'm sure. So good. Good to see you, Mike. And, and I will be in touch. So thank you for stopping in and saying hi in chat. Oh, I'm so happy. It makes me so happy. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Medicine Tribe says, Seth Rogers, now that is Sebastian's bio dad, said last night at a live stream, last confirmed sighting was Friday at school. Now, I thought it was confirmed that they saw him at Costco. Uh, yeah. Chloe, do you know for sure? We're talking about Sebastian Rogers. I mean, I would say for sure he was at Costco. Um, the photo that the TBI released, the original that's not cropped, um, it's cropped on the TBI's website, mm -hmm. but the original photo is him at Costco. And, you know, as web sleuths do, there's a receipt on the table. Um, and people cleared that receipt up it's a little bit blurry. And the date is for that, um, Saturday, not, mm -hmm. Saturday. um, it's for Saturday, the, what was it? The 24th at around 2 p.m. and it's for like two slices of pizza and something else. And there's pizza mm -hmm. and Sebastian in that photo. Um, the story about Sunday and going to BJ's and um, then going bowling and then to a restaurant. Um, the mom has never said what restaurant it was. Um, I have heard that there's footage of him at that restaurant and it can be confirmed, but I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. So the last confirmed sighting I can say is at Costco on Saturday. Right. The and it shows that that's when they were there and it's on the table in front of him. And Costco would have video. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Borders girl. I agree. Um, hold on. Where is it here? Um, Poor Seth. I think he's just questioning everything. I mean, he absolutely is. I mean, today he was searching a park in West Tennessee because of a psychic reading. I mean, he oh. is just, he is going with anything and everything, mm -hmm. um, following every lead. Oh, um, that's just heartbreaking. Okay, uh, it's a, a cookie break, people. Profiling evil, free cookies to the first 2,000 people Saturday at 10 a.m. Stop and meet the NFL players supporting him. Crave cookies. Yes, I will be there. Now, if I'm there first, can I get 2,000 cookies? I think that's what you're saying, right? I get 2,000 cookies if I'm first. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Better be, Mike. Better be. Um, Mike, I'll get the address, and uh, and I'll, I'll post it tomorrow night. In fact, let me make a note. 
I'll post it tomorrow night and people can show up. Let's let's get people out there to crave cookies. So hold on. Thank you, Mike. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm excited. I'm gonna have cookies on Saturday. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you, Mike. Hey, uh, Mike, if you could text me the address, and I'll I'll do a big thing tomorrow night in in the live chat. Okay. So thank you so much. Let's see. <laughs> Shiva's girl, can I get a player instead of a cookie? We'll see if we can arrange that for you, Shiva's girl. <laughs> Uh, I agree with David Bryant, Chloe. Thank you. You are people don't know how much work you are doing. It is amazing how you keep track of these things and how you can dig in and, and find. And you're still digging. You know, let's let's not uh, let's not anybody think that you're just stopping there, Chloe. So, <sighs> Chloe, you said, and I'm kind of leaning this way too. Again, this is just our opinion, people that it maybe something happened in the house that night and that's the problem now chloe somebody just said in chat that and again rumors people just rumors that um katie locked him out as a disciplinary action without his shoes and then when she went to go let him back in he was gone have you heard that i mean i've heard that i i haven't seen any true evidence of that um you know people speculate about everything in these groups um any kind of scenario they will speculate about so i have heard that as a speculation i have not seen any proof of that um was chris there we don't know if Chris was there. We don't. He claims that is something he cannot talk about. Um, I, he said last night that he didn't return after he found out Sebastian was missing until like one or so from Memphis. Um, but yeah, we don't know where Chris was <laughs> that night, honestly. Um, now, supposedly they talked on the phone for a couple hours while he was away at work, which is approximately three hours away. And we don't know if that's a normal thing, if they talk like that. Uh, yeah, he said. tried to allude that it was kind of normal last night. Um, mm -hmm. I do know that they are like really watching social media, especially Facebook. And it seems like every interview they do, they touch on something that someone's brought up a bunch mm -hmm. on Facebook. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to like cover this question now because people think this is suspicious and I have an explanation for this now. Um, but yeah, apparently they talked for a couple hours. It kind of seems like in that conversation is also when she yelled at Sebastian because she heard noise in his room. Right. To go to sleep. Um, and last night she alluded to her not going in his room that much anymore because he's a 15 year old boy and might be doing private things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why she doesn't check on him. Um, but she said it was about an hour after he went to bed. So she says he went to bed at nine. So we'll say that's about 10. And Chris said they were on the phone about 945. So I would assume that she was on the phone with Chris when that happened, when she yelled at Sebastian. Well, I wonder what the noise could have been. She I mean, says he was just, it just sounded like he was just like messing around with stuff in his room. Okay. All right. And then he she told him to go to bed. So. Right. She said that wasn't uncommon. Mm-hmm. Got right. it. Okay. Right. So, um, I, I just, and I've said this before, and I'm going to repeat myself because again, I'm an old bat. I can do that. Uh. The first night, and, and Chloe, you were in chat. Uh, when he said, I mean, the first night we talked about Sebastian's case, when Chris said, I run a strict household. I'm very strict. We have a strict household. That made my blood run cold. It, it did. Right then I went, I, I no, there's something wrong here. I, I just got a bad feeling, bad feeling. And uh, again, it, here's the thing, people. Uh, if it turns out that parents had nothing to do with it and he ran away why did he run away why did he run away well I think it's pretty damn obvious because you have a stepfather 
that is proudly talking about hitting him with a belt and running a strict household, you know, and he just, I, I'm sitting here listening to him and I can't believe the things that are coming out of his mouth. You know, everything he has to get on social media and defend himself. And I don't hear enough about Sebastian and the, t and like I said, and the heartbreak that they're feeling and the terror that they're feeling. My God, he's out there. He's been out there for so long. And is he okay? And, you know, nothing like that. Yeah. I, I haven't heard that from them. Um, I've heard it from Seth. Yes. Sure. And, okay. you know, I wrote a really long, like key point post um, about one of his interviews and he hits on so many things just about Sebastian, you know, mm -hmm. and he was teaching him to cook and he was teaching him where to find things in the grocery store and how to grocery shop. And he had gotten his fishing license and his sportsman's license. And he had just purchased a new school ID. And like Seth goes on and on about Sebastian and yes, who he is. Yeah. And he didn't really ever hide from Seth. He would go under his bed and read books with his flashlight. And he kind of referenced like, don't you remember as a kid putting a blanket over your head? with Absolutely. a flashlight and reading a book. Mm -hmm. um, so Seth really humanizes yeah. Sebastian. Um, but I do unfortunately feel like every time the mom and the stepdad talk about him, um, it almost feels like they're poking fun at him. Mm -hmm. um, trying to make him look dopey. Just truly positive, you know, without just like this little jab or undertone, like against Sebastian. Right. It's horrible. That's worrisome. It's very, very worrisome. And you're right. Seth is out there talking about his son and talking about Sebastian, where they're not. Oh, oh, yeah, Go exactly. Ahead. No. Um, I was going to ask, Chloe, do you have information on the dogs, scent dogs? If there I, is I a mean, scent. I, I don't think I have any more information that's been put out, but what Seth was told day one, he says, so that Monday um, by one of the dog handlers is that um, there was a scent hit at the construction site. And if you pull up a map of his home and where he went missing, you'll see that there's a construction site. And I've, I've driven this neighborhood. I'm local. Um, oh. There's a construction site for a new subdivision that touches their subdivision. And... Um, basically is parallel to their street, which is a dead end. So it almost like dead ends into this construction site. And then it's like over to the right of their, their street. Um, okay. So that's the construction site he's talking about. He was told there was a hit there, but then it was just like immediately lost. And s some have reported that it was a false hit. Um, I don't, handle dogs. So I, I don't exactly know what that means. And it's interesting because Chris talks about how Sebastian had never been to that construction site. Um, hmm. he wasn't curious about it. He, they hadn't like walked over there and visited or anything like that. So, um, I don't exactly know, you know, if it's true that it is a false hit, what that means, because Sebastian had never been there according to Chris. Um, so why his scent would show or why the dogs would track it there, I, I don't know. Right. Right. Hmm. And we don't know if law enforcement has gone inside their house and done any sort of uh, investigation, luminol, nothing like that that we're aware of, right? So um, when Chris, or no, excuse me, when Seth I uh, was speaking the other night. I I did ask that question about mm -hmm. searching their home. And he said they, they had searched um, Katie and Chris's home 10 to 12 times. And I asked if there had been any forensic searches. And he said not that he was aware of. Um, last night, I think Chris said that they had asked about fingerprinting and fingerprint that. And he 
said that they told him, well, that wouldn't be accurate because fingerprints show up weird on ridges and what? I don't know. It, it was weird. Um, yeah, I did hear that. I didn't understand what he was trying to say. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know that. Uh, I, I, it doesn't sound like luminol has been used. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, according to what, well, hold on, what you do? I'll go Thank back. You. I'll go back. Sorry, I forgot. William <laughs> Bagley said on Nancy Grace, it was said that, that that hit was a false positive. Yes, I know that Nancy Grace said that that was a false positive. <laughs> but again, but I again, mean, you know, we don't know for sure. Yeah. I mean, we can't, there's nothing, we don't have anything to back that up. Uh, is Seth a law, uh, Ellie or a correctional officer? I'm not sure. Do you know, Chloe? So the Davidson County Sheriff's Department. So we have Metro Nashville Police Department. And that mm -hmm. is who actually does like the arresting in Davidson County. Um, Nashville is Davidson County. So the Davidson County Sheriff's Department, they they are corrections officers and they, they run the jail. Okay. Yeah. Got it. But Got he it. is like, I think he is deputized, but um, yeah. You know, and the thing is, when you hear Seth talk, you can feel his pain. You can see it. Um, not with Chris. Now, he's the stepdad. Uh, with with Sebastian's mom, Katie, she does start to cry. You know, and I guess you shouldn't judge because you don't know what you'd be like in that situation. And I get it. I don't know. I just, I get that feeling more from Seth than anybody yes stepdad does work we don't know where uh apparently he goes out of town like three hours away and i don't know if that's on a regular basis or if it's just once in a while he apparently but, is a crane operator and has been working oh. on the saint jude project in okay. memphis um there's been speculation um, and apparently people that have talked to that job that um, he may have been losing that job. Although last night he said that they had worked it out. Um, but initially it was said that he was asked to not come back to his job until wow. this was sorted out. I wonder why. I don't know. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Um, Snarks, you're right, and the three of us have talked about this. Chris seemed, I think he seemed gleeful during the interview last night. Uh, ladies, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, at one point, yeah. he's like, what's the next one? Hit me with the next one. Like, he give was me like, a hard one. Yeah. Give me a hard one. Like, he was super excited about, like, being quite, I don't know. It was really odd. Yeah. It like was the attention, you know? Yep. Yeah, that's what I said last night. It seemed like the attention. Yeah. Yeah. He loved it. I agree. He loves I it, agree. I think. Well, Chloe, listen, I, again, you're you're working uh, long and hard on this case, and I really appreciate it. Insightful One, if you could post Chloe's Twitter account in chat, and I'll put it in the description as well. And you do post a lot on, on Twitter with updates on, on things that you have found on this case and others as well. But Chloe, is there anything else you'd like to add about the Sebastian Rogers case and, and perhaps what you're working on? Um, one other thing I did find interesting in those documents that I received um, was, and mind you, these documents about Sebastian were from when he was like seven mm -hmm. um, were his diagnoses. So, he is diagnosed with a chromosome deletion syndrome, um, which can, it's almost like a spectrum, like autism, you know, mm -hmm. it can cause minor issues or very major issues um, with cognitive and physical disabilities. And then he, in these documents, was also diagnosed with a severe form of ADHD. So I, I know a lot of people have been asked me about like what medications he was on. Um, because initially when the Amber Alert came out, it was, you know, he is without his medications. Um, but it's never been specified. And Chris, um, 
invoked HIPAA <laughs> the other night, even though he's not his prescriber. So that's not how that works. Um, <laughs> right. But I, I, like, I, I he said he couldn't just. <laughs> He, he couldn't discuss his medications because it would be a violation of HIPAA, but Chris yeah, that's the doctor and the medical. Okay. So that's not how that works. But um, so it is interesting now, like um, in, in the beginning when they were searching for him, they said that he doesn't sleep well at night. Um, and it just kind of indicated that he was probably on some sort of stimulant, you know, and that makes sense now mm -hmm. because he was diagnosed with um, a severe form of ADHD. And he was also diagnosed with, oppositional defiance disorder. Um, and this was back in like 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then Seth said the other night that he wasn't diagnosed with autism until last October. So it was, that was a recent diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just interesting to me, you know, and I'm, I, I'm just constantly trying to humanize Sebastian because I feel like in, in the beginning, people didn't even know if he was verbal, you know, it was just right. like the autistic child was missing. And, um, I don't think the mom and the stepdad did a very good job of explaining his cognitive abilities and, um, mm -hmm. his intelligence level. Um, I think Seth has done a better job of kind of showing us who Sebastian really is, you know? Um, I mean, he has a sportsman's license and, you know, he's very smart. He built an ATM in his room. He had money tucked away. That's yeah. Like, isn't that wow. cool? I'd love to see that. I bet that's really cool. I mean, it's also really interesting that he built that and had money tucked away and he didn't take it with him. Yeah. That you mean, think he would, but again, two things, did something happen in the house that night or was he running for his life? Right. Or did he get locked out? I mean, that's another theory, you know, mom right. not letting him in. I just, just feel like if he was locked out, it, he would have come back, you know? He would have stayed there. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Because why run away with and the your... the sense. I mean, the sense. Like, if he ran away, where is it? Those dogs are good. Yes. Those dogs are really good. I mean, they can pick up scents. Some say up to a week, but... I've talked to some dog handlers since he went missing and it, I mean, it can be much longer than that. And if he was barefooted, that'd leave more feet on the grass. I mm -hmm. mean, absolutely would leave more sense than that. There's just a lot that does not add up. And uh, Chris Proudfoot and Katie keep talking. We love it. Absolutely love it. Keep just keep going on these YouTube channels. And I, of course you're welcome to come on here. You will get the hard questions. I will always be polite uh, and gracious to my guests, but I will always be truthful. I don't think he would like it very much, but hey, if you want the challenge, we will gladly have you come on and, and stay on as long as you need. So for both of you. Um, one other point, because the flashlight has been a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, the mom and stepdad explained that this was a keychain sized flashlight. So originally, you know, it was just a flashlight. First of all, they don't even know that he actually has that. They just right. find it. And for the first several weeks, it's like, oh, you're envisioning a flashlight, like one you hold in your hand. Like, yeah, when you hold. That's what I thought. Um, and then they explained it's like a two to three inch keychain flashlight, like something you would keep on your keychain. Those are small. Very small. Um and they didn't say that until after that surveillance footage came out of the flashlights. Mm -hmm. Of the little dots of light. Right. And so, or, they, or maybe it's not flashlights, but the dots of light, you know. Right. But it was interesting that they didn't explain what kind of flashlight it was until after that had come out. And what do you think of those dots of light that look like they kind of met up with each other? I mean, I think that they look like they're moving. Um, mm -hmm. And I I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if it's a flashlight. I, I do think that one of the dots of light look like they go back into the house. Mm -hmm. And one doesn't. Okay. Um, but it's so dark and grainy. I mean, you... But like I said, I drove that neighborhood and there's much more cameras and I'm sure they have more footage than they're alleging. Mm -hmm. Well, they said they didn't have any. Um, could they? Yes, they said that. 
initially. They, and so they could be lying and they don't, they don't need to tell the public the truth. You know, they have their reasons. They don't need to tell us the truth. Well, no. I think in the last TBI statement, they said that they did have quite a bit, um, but that it didn't um, produce like any certain evidence or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it was something like that. Um, so, well, and I know like my cameras, they have the, uh, you can see in the dark, you know, it'll alert me when there's monsters at my front door trying to kill me. I'll get an alert and I'll see them. And so uh, he would have been seen, which just leads to the conclusion that he never left the house on his own. You know, what happened there? He would have been spotted on those cameras. Right. I think so, too. I mean, I have cameras as well. And if you're at a certain distance, like you might not be picked up on my camera, even if you walk in front of my house, but you're on the other side of the road or something. Mm -hmm. But um, the floodlights on these houses though, and the motion sensor lights on all these houses being triggered to be turned on by motion should trigger cameras to pick up motion. Mine does. Yeah. Um, you know, Chris tried to say that footage was just motion lights and they weren't moving. What? Well, yeah, he said like they were floodlights and motion lights. And oh. um, I've never seen a floodlight that flies. I haven't. I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's one of those things. Don't believe your eyes. Just believe what I'm telling you. Those lights were moving. Right. You know, maybe it had nothing to do with Sebastian. And why would they want to downplay that? That's what I don't get. Well, Why if would the they want to? did come on, usually there would be a motion to do that anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Either someone flips yeah. them on or they're motion yeah. sensitive and they come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't get it. I, I just, there's, again, he, his talking is uh, unbelievable. It's an arrogance that I haven't heard, well, since the Abraham Shakespeare case when Dee Dee Moore, the murderer, came on and was posting how innocent she was on Web Sleuths. You know, it's just this arrogance. And again, I'm not suggesting he murdered Sebastian. I'm just saying it's the arrogance. That yeah. Is. And I mean, like I told you earlier, um, and I guess I know you'll have to move on, but it, it's interesting, like after the TBI released that statement, which doesn't actually say a whole lot, mm -hmm. um, he exaggerates a lot of what that says and says, if you go to the TBI news link, it'll say that the parents have been vetted and cleared and all this. It doesn't and say anything like that. to it a lot. Um, doesn't say that at all. Um, but it, it's almost like after that was released, he got this sense of confidence to just become a free chatty bird. Right. Well, again. So I say let him talk. Oh, absolutely. Let him keep talking. I just think his ego can't stand people talking about him and him not answering. He's used to being in charge, in my opinion, it looks like. And he's used to controlling the narrative. And by God, he's going to do it here, too. So that's the only thing. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. And again, I'm going to repeat this just one more time. If there was not, if it didn't happen in the house, if, if let's say, Sebastian did run away. Why? Well, I think I have a good idea why, you know? So again, Chloe, I can't thank you enough. And you're still working on this case. I know you got a lot of things to go through and you're uh, probably going to be getting more documents. And I just can't thank you enough for everything that you do for coming on here and explaining it to us and, and helping us understand what's going on. If there's anything we can ever do for you, please don't hesitate. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you guys and yeah, no, I'm I'm not stopping and until there's a conclusion to this case. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chloe. We'll be in touch. All right. Have bye, -bye. A good night. bye. You too now. Bye bye. Bye. Isn't she wonderful? I just love her. Oh my yeah. gosh. We are we are yeah. so lucky, you guys, to yeah. have have her. We really are. And to have her be so willing to come on the show and um, again, she's a licensed PI people. She knows what she's doing and she's not making any money off of this. Uh, you know, 
So she's doing it because she cares. Yeah, I find it amazing that they haven't done a forensic search on the house. And, you know, the last couple of weeks, the stories I've covered, mm -hmm. um, you know, they were about teenagers that went missing. Mm -hmm. And nobody, there were no sightings outside of the house, no camera right. footage, no sightings. And then when they went back and did a forensic search, they found evidence they needed to make arrests. Right. So I found that they interesting. Yeah. Did the forensic search. Those were the two cases. Yep. They were both from Great Britain, right? Y yes. Yeah. And went missing. You know, supposedly they left the house. There was no ev evidence they left the house. And they finally did a forensic search and, and found the evidence. I, I know. Um, I uh, I don't know. Maybe they have them. We just don't know about it. That could be. Right. Absolutely could be. There's probably a lot we don't know. And uh, there is that one reporter. And, of course, I forgot gotten his name. Is it Nick? Nick Barris, yeah. Nick Barris. Did, uh, has he done any reports lately that you know of about Sebastian? I'd have to check because I'm not sure right now. He asked. did uh, a great, uh, sat down and just talked for 45 minutes on his Facebook page about Sebastian's case. And he, he said that it is his feeling that the police are now looking at this being uh, possible foul play. So wouldn't surprise me at all. I hope we can get Nick Barris on because I would love to talk to him about this case. He'd be great. So, but Chloe's the best. So Chloe T, she's on Twitter. We will get you that uh, link and put it in the description as well. Okay, let's talk about Marilyn, uh, sorry, sorry, Madeline Soto. Uh, she was murdered right after her 13th birthday, birthday party. Uh, her mom's boyfriend or husband, I'm, I, I hear both, Stefan has been arrested on some pretty horrific charges of uh, child porn on his phone and bestiality and all kinds of horrific things like that. And he's been arrested for that, has not been arrested for the murder of uh, Madeline Soto. Now, I have read that they have video of Madeline in Stefan's car and she was dead. Uh, they, he lied about the whole thing. A lot of people wanted to know is Madeline's mother. Oh my God. See, her name just went right out of my brain. Katie. No, that's Sebastian's mom. Uh, uh, see, I'm sorry. Madeline's mother. I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> if you could, if you could look it up while I chit chat here for a moment. Yeah. Um, and real quick, uh, Nancy Nurse, whoops, that's a great question. Have the police checked St. Jude's construction site? I would hope so. If they haven't, I would hope they would have, would, would soon, very soon. Jen, thank you, Jen. Thank yep. you. I was just going to, yeah, 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 I just found it. So, yeah, thank you. Jen. Okay, Madeline's mother, Jen, said at first, we took her to school and dropped her off at the church with this story. Didn't didn't make any sense. And then according to Jen, in another report I read, she said that she saw Madeline getting ready for school. According to police, she was killed before that. So if what, okay, and, and first when she said we took her to school, dropped her off at the church, then she changed her story and said Stefan did. So she corrected that. I had not heard her correct the uh I saw her getting ready for school. I did not hear her say that. It was in a report, a news report that I read. If she did say that, then she absolutely has something to do with this, with the murder of her daughter. At the very least, she didn't protect her daughter. You know, and so today, when the police held a press conference, people were expecting, okay, murder charges against Stefan. What's his last name? I can't even remember. I don't care. He's a Burns. disgusting yeah. I'm sorry, what? Stur I was just what saying his it? last name, Stearns. Stearns. Stearns, okay. Yeah, Stephen Stearns. Uh, people were expecting murder charges. And the big question was, are there going to be charges against Jen? And the police answered kind of cryptically 
but you can read between the lines. Basically, mm -hmm. anybody that was uh, around Madeline, nobody's been cleared. Nobody's right. been cleared. So right there, that leaves the door wide open that I think they're going to bring charges. When they charge Stefan, I think they'll charge Jen as well. But that was it for the press conference. And a lot of people were mad, man. I was looking at the uh, comments under videos and, and the uh, the live streamers, like, you know, from some of the big live streams were, were annoyed. It's like, why did they even do this? You know, there was nothing. They literally didn't have anything. But I did See, I think. got a lot out of the press conference, though. What for else did example, you get? For example, they said that all the charges he's faced, you know, the charges involving a child, you know, mm -hmm. physically had to do with stuff that happened inside the home. Okay, that's that's yeah. new. So that points that's that new. out. And um, so, but of course, the videos can involve, we don't know if there were videos he got from other people. I'm sure there were some of Maddie. And then there could have been videos he'd got from online. The charges right. for the actual physical contact is stuff stuff that happened inside the home. That is that's very interesting. And they talked about yeah. not this press conference, but it was stated before that he had um, pictures of you know younger kids and doing horrible things. Mm -hmm. And for son's mom, you could be right. I think Jen will get charges and turn state's evident uh, state's witness with a plea. That very well could be. Absolutely, you could very well be right. So. Anyway, uh, guys, I was going to read the Scott, Pe finish or start to read, finish up the Scott Peterson opening argument <laughs> statement from the prosecution. But um, I, I have to, uh, I have to go do, there's nothing wrong. I just have to uh, go take care of some business. So I will continue that tomorrow night. I'll take it out of the description. So I do apologize if that's why you're here. I'm very sorry, but I will promise I will get to it tomorrow night. I promise, promise, promise. And poor Ping, I know he's going to be doing a live show, second live show. And he's probably thinking, ah, she hasn't even gotten to the Scott Peterson um, opening statement. Yeah, I got plenty of time on the sandwich. And he's going to hear me go off and just go. Ah. So give, he's give go Ping. make his ramen. <laughs> yes, his ramen. Exactly. Oh, we love Ping. He's the best. He's the best. So anyway, Ping will be back on later tonight. Uh, just And I'll put the link in the description. It's Nights with Ping. And he'll be doing a second update. He's got some more information on cases that he is following. Um, I thought I put it in the description saying that I would be reading the Scott Peterson. Maybe I didn't. Okay, no, I'll take a look. Tonight we did. Or oh, in your description. It's not on the thumbnail. That's what I No, mean. it's not on the thumbnail. It's But I thought I put yeah, it in my description. description. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it out of that. So anyway, I do apologize, everybody. I just, uh, there's nothing wrong. It's just something I need to take care of. And you know how that is. So, okay, everybody. Um, Four Sons Mom and Moonlight View, I'm so glad you're here and helping. Thank you so much for being our moderators. Love and Coco, hope to see you soon. And Ping the Router, Nights with Ping, coming on again tonight. And of course, Insightful One, couldn't do this without you at all. And Chloe T, thank you for everything. We'll be back tomorrow night. We got lots more to talk about tomorrow night at 1030 Eastern on Web Sleuth YouTube Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.